of all, thank you so much for sticking till the last talk. I know it's very hard and energy consuming to like bear through this entire conference and sticking till the last talk. I appreciate your patience and I hope we all, we can make your patience worth. So starting with cluster management and cluster API, how many of you are aware of the term cluster API or have used it? Okay. A lot of them. Uh, you're, you're using it, or you're currently introduced to it, or you have been using it all from a long time. How many of you have been using it for a long time? Very few. And how many of you started using it uh, like recently? Our co-organizers gave a very good introduction. It's not working. So I'll just skip through very fast. Uh, my name is Subhash Mehta. I work at CIVO as a site reliability engineer. And I was, in the past, a LFX mentee for Cluster API provider GCP. And I've also been an outreachy intern. And uh, my friend Anirudh will introduce himself. Hey, hey everyone. I am Anirudh. I, am, uh, I work as a software engineer at SciSelf. Apart from that, I did LFX mentorship at uh, CAPG. And right now, I also maintain two of the Cluster API providers, which is Hetzner and High Velocity. And yeah, so we'll let's talk about the uh, bits and pieces of Cluster API. So very quickly, moving over to the agenda, we'll just discuss about the cluster lifecycle, why it is very uh, hard to maintain the cluster lifecycle by like manually, and why we need that automation. Like, it's common, right? We are living in the DevOps world. We love automation. So, and in uh, the type of CAPI providers, like there's a common misconception that Cluster API has providers like uh, GCP provider or Azure providers, but there's also the type of Cluster API providers under which is infrastructure, and under infrastructure, there are uh, like providers like GCP, Azure, AWS. So, we'll be discussing about that. Yeah, uh, we have been hearing about Kubernetes this entire day today. I won't bore all of you with, again, starting with Kubernetes. Just a basic introduction. You know all what is Kubernetes, basic orchestration scaling tool. We will uh, get on to the fun part there next. So this is a very basic orchestra uh, architecture of a cluster, Kubernetes cluster. The major components here I would like to highlight is this control plane. Please uh, try to remember the words that I tell because this will be used in the next slides. The control plane then controls the nodes and uh, then later on the pods uh, wherein all our workloads are running. So we'll be playing around with this control plane a, uh, a bit to automate all of the things that a Kubernetes does for us. Why do we need to manage clusters? This is a very big question. Why, why do we need this automation that we are about to talk today about? So uh, as, as the complexity grows, while uh, like, uh, for example, I have around 10 to 15 applications in my organization, and I want them to run concurrently and to be like available to every customer at all times. So I would require a very good scalability, traffic, uh, traffic management, and load balancing, right? I don't want my application to be down when there's um, more, more footfall, like more people are visiting the website, or when uh, like less people are visiting the website, the, web, the application is not working at all. So to, to like manage all of these things at all times, to ensure your application is running at all times, we would need the scaling and load balancing of your clusters at all times. So that is not possible always manually to do that, right? You won't be sitting at the, inside, at the front of a PC and you'd be monitoring your Kubernetes clusters as all day, would you? You won't? Yeah. So all about uh, rollouts and rollbacks, automated. Like, if you make any changes to one cluster spec or one configuration, you want that all of the applications that are using that same feature, common feature, to adopt to that. You won't be going to every cluster or every pod or every node and be changing that concurrently, would you? You won't, because that would be a repetition of your task. So we would need automated rollouts and rollbacks. We, we need to like admit we humans are very lazy. We always find ways to like reduce our workload. That's why we, all of these tools are built. 
self healing like sometimes what happens a uh, node dies or a pod dies so if a pod dies whose duty is it to like pull back the pod obviously uh, uh, the management or the configuration that has been given there but sometimes what happens uh, like for if, if i give an example uh, in a cloud service provider if a customer is running their workload on any cluster and one of their pod fails but they're not aware of it we as engineers like uh, i am working as a site reliability engineer so i know like when i get an alert at pager duty or when i get an alert at uh, alert manager i know this pod has failed and something is wrong with this cluster and all of these things like uh, the customer is not able to uh, put their application to full use because of this issue so how does the cluster how does the customer know all of this that their application is not failing and is working all of the times so we would need something of self healing like something if if something happens if a pod moves ahead of the memory like uses more memory than required it would fail right that's that's a common concern it would fail but how do we make sure that this pod comes back as efficiently as it was before so that's what self healing and we would need to automate that stuff again configuration management and secrets like secrets is a very big pain like uh, managing secrets managing roles and managing access across uh, every stage like with pods with nodes or with multiple clusters in an environment is very difficult to manage all of these manually is very difficult right so that's why we would need cluster api okay so this is a very uh, small meme uh, where you can see i think you can understand it infer it from it like running a kubernetes bare metal cluster in a production environment is very easy but it would take you ages to go to that perfection and to make sure every end to end process is done correctly and your applications are up and running always <sighs> okay lot of things about the background what is capi so cluster api is basically a kubernetes style bootstrapping operator it's kind of an operator which is uh, allowing us more control over our clusters but in an automated way like all of the difficulties that i discussed before are managed or handled by cluster api cluster api will basically provide uh, you with just a cookbook where you can get a set of recipes and you can add in your own flavors to make that recipe your own you can call it your own you can deploy it in your own infrastructure you can add in your own resources or you can add in like uh, anything that you like that suits your requirements or suits your needs and you can make all of these processes hassle free and man and automatically using cluster api that too in the kubernetes style uh, management api management so uh yeah there are multiple uh, types of providers okay where cluster api can be like cluster api can be customized to be built on particular infrastructure you can bootstrap one from from uh, like zero level and build that up to your needs and then uh, it's it's uh, very simple to use there are cus uh, there are set of crds custom resource definitions where you define your state that you want your cluster to be in or you want uh, the desired state of your cluster where you want to see your cluster running or configuring you can get that through very simple steps using cluster api because everything has been set like the plate has been set all of the ingredients has been given to you you just need to cook it in your own way a uh, important fact uh, more than 100 kubernetes distributions and installers have been created till date now so not just cluster api gcp cluster api aws or cluster api azure there are more than 100 uh, kubernetes distributions today and all with all coming with a template so all you need just an environment and you pick up the template and you are ready to go with your kubernetes cluster in production environment all control within your hand so moving on uh, we'll discuss a bit about the cluster api architecture so my friend will take over from you the whole architecture of the cluster api so first the user makes the api request to cube api server and uh, as subhash mehta said the cluster api is all about different crds different resources and running together to make your like manage clusters so there are like three main components 
which is cluster, like cluster machine and like machine deployment. So machine deployment and machine has the same relation as your deployment as uh, and pod. So like as deployment you create to manage different pods, like you have machine deployments which is reference to the clusters and like through machine deployments you define how many like uh, machines you want and stuff like that and like the cluster API uh, uh, controller or operator uh, handles all the things. And cluster defines your Kubernetes cluster in different uh, providers like GCP, AWS and Hetzner like that. So we have different layers in cluster API. So basically we have five layers which is bootstrapping, control plane, infrastructure, IP address management and uh, a API add-ons and adapters. So going to bootstrapping. So bootstrapping is creating the Kubernetes cluster. So like you have, you have a cluster, but you don't have like a Kubernetes inside and whatever, all the components. So what you will do, uh, you will write a CRD like, uh, like boarding YMLs and define what are the configurations you need to the uh, bootstrapping. And as you can see, we are creating a test, test cluster thing and we are uh, deploying that in a, a GCE. And the popular thing like cluster API use for bootstrapping the cluster is QADM, which is a different set of topics. But uh, yeah, you write a lot of QADM scripts to like the bootstrap the, your cluster in the provider. Yeah, second is control plane. As she said that like, the two main important thing is control plane and workers. Control plane actually um, controls your cluster API cluster. So we have a, like, uh, as you can see, as I said, we created a QADM uh, bootstrap cluster. So we need a QADM control plane. So we said we, uh, the control plane has three replicas. And we have like kind and whatever CID and and cloud provider is GC. This is a basic like QBDM control, like CID for uh, spinning cluster in the G uh, Google Cloud. And the layer, next layer is infrastructure. So infrastructure can be like, um, it's like an abstraction over different providers. So your AWS has an infrastructure, your uh, GCP has infrastructure. So the providers of the cluster API writes this infrastructure. So main, if you go to the main cluster API repository, you won't find any infrastructure code or controller in the main cluster API project. But you will find it in different providers of cluster API. So what you, suppose you came up with a new cloud provider tomorrow and you want to write your own cluster API controller for that, so you will write your own infrastructure CRD. And you will define your resources like um, your region, uh, your network, and reference to those things. And we have machine template for our infrastructure. So this machine template actually refers to the machine of our cluster. So it will get reference to the uh, worker nodes. And those like CRDs get referred to our infrastructure. And second thing is IP address management, which is like you have different now pods, different cluster API machines, and everyone needs like IP address. So you probably need another CID or controller to manage your IP address. So you don't find like a conflict and like say like pod conflict like that. Yeah. So we like a lot of softwares. We have add-ons and adapters. Like in cluster API as well, we have add-ons and adapters. So uh, suppose if famous software we have is Helm. So suppose you want a Helm support in your cluster API provider. So what do you, what do you use? And we also use in a, my provider like Hetzner, like we have the Helm add-on support. So if anyone wants to write the entire thing using Helm, so they will also like install the Helm CRD into their cluster and like they do the, all the scripting thing using Helm. So you can also like write those things into, like consider those things into the cluster API ecosystem. So as I said, like we have in a base which is cluster API and in different la like providers have their um, repositories and infrastructure. And what makes is like a similarity. So suppose the 
the controller you write for GCP will be almost identical for controllers you write for AWS. So the basic architecture will be same. So like, so you, you can see like in GCP we have the cluster API in top, and second layer we have this CRDs, which is like cluster API is controlling. Uh, control plane deployment, machine deployments and things. And at the bottom we have infrastructure layer, which is like GCP provider and at the end the GCP cluster gets created. Now if I go to the next slide, and now it, it is AWS. So AWS has the same architecture, like cluster API working in the same way for different providers. So it's like a, working like a framework. So. Here you can see the same. We have at the top layer cluster API controlling different CRDs, and at the bottom we have the cloud provider, which is like getting spinned up, the cluster getting spinned up, and all the network being managed by IP add-ons. And if you want, you can do whatever using Helm. So it's it's like uh, it's like a whole ecosystem. And last one, uh, the provider I maintain, which is Hetzner, which is also like very similar, and it's nothing, I don't want to waste more time, but it's uh, at the bottom, it's all same. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's one of the biggest projects in Kubernetes community, so do contribute like if you want to, and you can see different open issues are good for the issues first, and we, there are a lot, not like if you don't know much like Go code or coding, you can also contribute in different ways like documentation, uh, like we have this shadow program of cluster API where different people get selected for like maintaining the project for a fixed term, like six months term, where you get to learn from the maintainers. And there are different uh, like section of the shadowing program, which is uh, first one is very important, uh, like popular, which is uh, the CI signal, which is maintaining a whole like proud jobs of. Kubernetes ecosystem, and you will be monitoring and you will be reporting to the maintainers and what went wrong and um, other like mishappening thing. And also there are like shadow for documentation, so you will be writing uh, and documentation. And like if you are if you're good into shadowing, you will become a maintainer too. If so uh, the Kubernetes community is working very hard to like bring this cluster API to light and to help a lot of people help their lives make easier. So we would request anyone to contribute in any way they can. There are also non-code contribution types, like you can contribute to the design, you can contribute to the documentation, you can help in the translation of the docs, or simply you can just help anybody else in the community or by joining the Slack channel. So uh, there are multiple resources, like these are by far the most trusted and the most popular ones. Uh, you can join the Slack channel of Kubernetes and you can like uh, go down to the sub uh, channel of cluster API where you can uh, communicate with the, uh, with, with the people or help out anybody else. Uh, you can uh, go to GitHub uh, cluster API through this link where you can like uh, get the code repository of the cluster API, and then you can navigate to uh, the other parts of it. There's uh, the cookbook that I talked up to you at the beginning of this talk. Like you get the template over which you can uh, you build your own infrastructure. You can get that uh, at the at this location, the Capi cookbook, or this. Uh, uh, I think that's all for us. Do you have any questions? We can take that. Cluster API and uh, open cluster manager, which we discussed in the morning, the same or the different? Thing? Is cluster API or open cluster management same or different? See, a cluster API basically gives you uh, like a set of recipes that I'm telling you. Open cluster management is a different thing. You get a set of instructions already built, like in a general way, and you tailor that to your own requirements and modify that to your own requirements to manage the cluster, manage the environment you're in. While open cluster management, you just get to manage the cluster that's already built for you. So that is basically a different part wherein you start and you, not just the managing part, but also you can control uh, how your cluster is built from the ground up. It's, uh, uh, see, Terraform is also a manual thing, right? You don't love to write Terraform code always. For every little change, you will always have to make changes to the Terraform file and then do Terraform apply and all of these things will run again from the top. 
So in that process, sometimes what happens, your cluster IP changes. So there can be conflicts. You don't get to manage that. You don't have the right to manage that, right? But in cluster API, something like if something goes wrong, you're automating this entire stuff. So if something goes wrong, you can, uh, the cluster API manages it itself because you have already provisioned that state. Like uh, for example, you have said, if, if, if I slap Aniruddha, I know he will slap me back. So that's a state I have already defined. I know this will happen, right? But in Terraform, you can't do that. You can't tell, you can't write conditions in Terraform. You can't write like, if in Terraform, hey Terraform, if something happens like this in my cluster, you need to change this configuration by yourself and deploy that to my cluster. That's not the process to do that. I hope I was able to make you understand what I was telling. <laughs> 